What does it take to be a champion? Sure, we can look at a boxer like Muhammad Ali, a tennis player like Serena Williams, or a footballer like Cristiano Ronaldo, and say he's talented and works hard. But what we really want to know is how much of that success is talent, and how much of it is planning, preparation, and environment. We want to know the ingredients of expertise so that we can bring it out of ourselves. Or perhaps we want to know if the work is going to be worth the effort. As one fascinating study of champions of all levels from numerous sports found, the keys to greatness are fairly consistent. And as the findings show, the things that separate the super champions from those who were on the cusp were quite clear. A fierce desire to overcome challenges. Constantly setting new goals and challenges. Persistent investment and using setbacks to ignite hyper-development. And being intrinsically motivated. For whatever challenges we face, if we have the fierce desire to overcome it, then investment plus research plus development equals excellence. This is the equation offered as a solution to Nigeria's social economic problems by the Tertiary Education Trust Fund as it establishes 12 additional centers of excellence. These are the chronicles of the journey to institutionalize research and development in Nigeria. Hello, and welcome to this edition of TED Fund, The Paradigm Shift. I am Stanley Bentu. Today we will be focusing on the concept of what is called the center of excellence. But before we do that, let's focus on the very concept of excellence in itself. Excellence is a quality which is unusually good, and so it surpasses ordinary standards. It is also used as a standard of performance as measured, for example, through economic indicators. The ancient Greeks had a concept of areti, which meant an outstanding fitness for purpose. This occurs in the works of Aristotle or Homer. Another related concept is eudaimonia, which was the happiness that resulted from a life that was well lived being prosperous and fulfilled. The equivalent concept in Islam philosophy is isan. Now the Japanese have a word which does not have an English equivalent, but it embodies the culture of excellence which has made this small island one of the richest and most powerful countries in the world. That word is kaizen, a term meaning change for the better or continuous improvement. It is a Japanese business philosophy regarding the processes that continuously improve operations and involve all employees. Now developed countries with robust economies, with or without knowing it, practice the philosophy of Kaizen by continuously investing in research and development. TED Fund believes that Nigeria must do the same through its centers of excellence. But what is a center of excellence and how can it even make a difference at all? Let's find out. A center of excellence is a team, a shared facility or an entity that, that provides leadership, best practices, research, support, and or training for a focus area. Due to its broad usage and vague legal precedent, a center of excellence in one context may have completely different characteristics from another. The focus area might be a technology, a business concept, a skill, or a broad area of study. A center of excellence may also be aimed at revitalizing stalled initiatives. 
The term may also refer to a network of institutions collaborating with each other to pursue excellence in a particular area. This is in order to enhance scientific research being patronized by industry and in order to make the tertiary educational institutions generally more responsive to industry needs. In addition, it's expertise development and training of doctorate level or at doctorate level rather in areas of industry interest and the development of knowledge management platforms and innovation hubs. In academic institutions, a center of excellence often refers to a team with a clear focus on a particular area of research. Such a center may bring together faculty members from different disciplines and provide shared facilities. Bringing together the complementary resources needed for technical development and industrial application. This includes concentrating multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and translational research competence in order to further the development of products, processes, and services, typically by focusing on problems that demand larger efforts. At its core, the main purpose of a COE is to define and develop standards and best practices. This includes developing and documenting templates, blueprints, and repeatable processes and methodologies for all significant work efforts. The overarching goal is to support strategic and applications-oriented research and expertise <clears throat> with potential industrial applications. This means supporting national and global competitive research and development in strategic and applied sciences including, of course, medicine and engineering, with the aim of generating innovations. This is usually done with a focus on government-defined priority areas. General questions the COE should ask include, have we solved this issue in the past? If so, how? What worked or didn't work? What lessons did we learn? Is there an industry standard that we can use as a baseline for comparative purposes? To be successful, members of the COE need to be steadily in tune with the latest industry trends, established practices, and emerging thought streams. With COEs, a developing nation like Nigeria can transform its fortunes through the sheer brain power of its most brilliant academics. But it needs to work with industry to identify areas of need, provide funding support and scale up outcomes and the government to inspire and broker the process. Now that looks great, right? But it requires a shift from how we do things today. One that requires creating roles and functions or ensuring better cross-cutting functions in a national economic structure that doesn't currently support it or more often isn't aware that there is even a need. TETFUND insists that Nigeria requires a fierce desire to overcome challenges by creating something from nothing. Barely a year ago, TETFUND inaugurated 12 pioneer centers of excellence in Nigeria. And the paradigm shift was there to observe the event. The COEs were backed by a takeoff grant of 1 billion naira each and a promise of more COEs to follow in the near future. Today, TETFUND has fulfilled that promise and doubled the number of COEs. Take a look. The Executive Secretary of TETFUND, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, on the 24th of November 2021, inaugurated an additional 12 TETFUND Centers of Excellence to add to the previous 12 established in November of 2020. This time in selected polytechnics and colleges of education. The event took place at the TETFUND headquarters in Abuja. In his statement, Professor Bogoro said that upon his assumption of duty as the Executive Secretary back in April 2014, he presented a five-year strategic plan, which proposed the establishment of a new department to drive R&D along with centers of excellence in tertiary institution and industry. That was why when TETFON's Board of Trustees approved the creation of the Department of R&D slash CE as part of the new six-point vision of the organization, it conveyed the strong resolve of the fund to pair COEs 
with R&D as an indispensable component. I am delighted to welcome you all to this historic occasion, one that I hope will lay the foundation as well as define the trajectory for the transformation of our beleaguered tertiary education institutions from mere citadels of learning where inputs and outputs have left much to be desired for far too long to the springboard of Nigeria's leap into the knowledge economy paradigm in keeping with the established tradition that higher education institutions are the bastion of intellectualism and the breeding ground for creativity, original thinking, and innovation that shape and define civilizations and also drive economies and development. Some of you here may recall that upon assumption of duty as Executive Secretary in April 2014, I presented a five-year strategic plan which proposed the establishment of a, two, of a new department to drive R&D along with centers of excellence. Well, I want to come out this time we refer to Dr. Gire, the director of R&D and centers of excellence, not center of excellence. Twelve institutions were selected to form second batch of the TET Fund Centers of Excellence, this time from Nigeria's public polytechnics and colleges of education. They were represented by their respective heads. While congratulating them, the TET Fund boss drew their attention to the huge burden of expectation that comes with them being the pioneer beneficiary institutions of the initiative from polytechnics and colleges of education. He also outlines the strategic framework and establishment guidelines for TET Fund COEs as approved by the Board of Trustees, the details of which were made available to each institution in a comprehensive document. The conceptual framework for centers of excellence is unlikely to be unfamiliar, alien or even novel to most of you here. Nevertheless, a strategic framework and establishment guidelines for TED Fund centers of excellence as approved by the TED Fund BOT will be made available to all of you. These guidelines are meant to ensure effective and efficient operations of the centers of excellence in a sustainable manner. I will proceed to highlight some of the silent excerpts from the guidelines here. A center of excellence, whether in higher educational institutions like universities, polis, or monotechnics, and colleges of education, or a stand-alone entity, is known for and characterized by some of the best brains, profound experts, and specialists up-to-date research equipment and facilities, a crop of brilliant early career and postdoctoral researchers being groomed and on, and on overall attractive and conducive working environment and conditions of service to match global prescriptions and best practices. So I can tell you this is the third fund definition of a center of excellence. Six polytechnics were selected to focus on technical skills development and entrepreneurship education in addition to six colleges of education tasked to specialize in pedagogy and periodic curriculum review and development. As with the pioneer COEs, the next batch have a balanced spread of two per geopolitical zone of Nigeria and will be funded for five years with a grant of 1 billion naira each. The 12 beneficiary institutions are as follows. From the North Central, the Federal Polytechnic Nasarawa and the Federal College of Education Pangshin, and from the Northeast, the Federal Polytechnic Bochi and the Federal College of Education Yola, the Federal Polytechnic Kaduna and the Federal College of Education Zaria make up the Northwest Zone. And from the southeast, the Federal Polytechnic Nekede and Alvan Ikoku Federal College of Education Oeri. The South South candidate institutions are the Federal Polytechnic Aochi and the Federal College of Education Technical Omoku 
and from the southwest, Yaba College of Technology, Lagos, and at DME College of Education, Undo. I want, on behalf of Provost of the Beneficiary Colleges of Education, to appreciate Ted for, for this initiative. To have Center of Excellence in all of, in all of these institutions, representing all the six geopolitical zones is a thing of joy. It will go a great way to help, as you have mentioned in your address, sir, to help students to be creative and also to be innovative in, during the course of their studies. And if they are creative, and innovative, and they can have critical thinking, they will be good ambassadors of Nigeria in the society. I want to express our very deep gratitude to Ted Fund, to the Executive Secretary, and to everyone who has made this possible. You are, we will promise that we will not disappoint you. We have seen your heartbeat since you came, and uh, as an institution at the Federal Polytechnic Nakede, we have been we have been drumming it into the ears of our staff that that fund is more interested in research and development now than in infrastructural physical infrastructure, right. and we have um, we have actually been moving away from physical infrastructure to R and D. And uh, on the basis of that, uh, my institution had to, before I came, we used to have one director and one deputy director, but we had to appoint deputy directors for all the schools so that there will be activity, research, and uh, there will be other activities in every school monitored by the deputy director from that school. And uh, we want to thank you, sir, and uh, promise that we will do everything that you have said we will study this uh, strategic framework and uh, make sure that we implement the framework to the best of our ability and also giving your resourceful R&D director that will help us uh, to know what to do at every turn. The executive secretary in his closing remarks congratulated the beneficiary institutions and urged them to hit the ground running and ensure the strengthening and sustainability of centers beyond the year 2026. Now it is indeed interesting when you observe the big picture of TED Fund's strategy to create a critical mass of productive minds for the Nigerian economy. This pivot towards skills and education curricula makes sense when you consider certain things. Helping workers to develop skills and maintain them makes economic sense. Unskilled workers face unemployment and must take unsteady, low-wage jobs that offer little career growth. This, in turn, reduces labor force, productivity, and limits economic investment. The private sector can't flourish when there isn't a skilled workforce to sustain it. The TED Fund COEs will open up access to education that match the needs of the labor market and teach critical skills. TED Fund will provide financial and analytical assistance to support policy research and analysis. Pedagogy and periodic curriculum, on the other hand, are essentially a series of activities and learning outcome goals related to each subject. They serve as a great map outlining where you need to go and how to get there. Successes in education that is relevant to one's economic growth are not created overnight. A great deal of thought, time and effort as well as expertise go into their development. How do leaders of these institutions feel about the significance of the occasion when they became TED Fund COEs. Let's find out. You see, this kind of uh, thing would assist us in the not boosting the 
quality of what we are producing in terms of, like in my school now currently, the last year student project produced uh, 15 kb foilless gensets. So with these kind of things coming to our institutions, it is going to help us to see how research and development will be transformed into reality practical aspect of it so for the benefit of not only the polytechnic sector but the larger society where these polytechnic are domiciled actually we see the light of the day. I, I see this as a challenge to us. I, uh, my institution already has um, a research and development directorate which we call research and innovation for development. We have a director and we have seven uh, deputy directors, because we want uh, want R and D, we want research and development activities to emanate from each school. If we just have one, our thinking is that if we just have one director and one deputy director, they may not be able to cover all the other uh, schools within the institution. So we have one from every school, um, and since and we did that when we realized that TED Fund, the emphasis of TED Fund, is shifting from um, physical infrastructure to R&D activities. Uh, prior to even this, I'm aware of this is coming up because it's an issue that we have been following it up. In my own case, like in my own institution, I already formed a committee and they have worked and they have already, as if we have key into the vision and mission of the TED Fund on this issue of entrepreneurship development. We have developed our own. So it's an issue just we see, we fine tune based on the framework given to us by the TED Fund. We already have uh, a, an entrepreneurship development center, uh, which where students learn skills and acquire skills for, you know, for, for them to survive in the society. So what we will do is to fine tune those things we have already done uh, to key into the current vision of globalization because the level at which that fund wants R&D to go now is to globalize it, to go beyond our institution, go beyond the nation and begin to uh, show visibility uh, beyond the shores of our nation. So we'll fine tune what we have on ground and then begin to move forward. You know, at any time till when I had the opportunity to talk on Tefan, I keep on saying like, there is this popular idea when we were in secondary school. They say no Nile, no Egypt. So no tech for no higher education in Nigeria. So actually, you know, prior to this, tech for concentration is on physical infrastructure, capacity building for staff who are going for masters, PhD, conferences and workshops. And now this is like another paradigm shift that will move the sector from where it belongs. Uh, giving quality education in terms of research and development uh, to our youth who are either at the ND level, national diploma level, or the higher national diploma level. So that this issue of entrepreneurship development should see the actual practical aspect of it is being visualized, is being harnessed is being sustained so that the society will prosper than where we are now. Yes, that fund has been very supportive. In fact, I don't think we will uh, have the level of visibility, the level of relevance that we have today without that fund. And that is the same with all other higher institutions in Nigeria. That fund has helped us a lot. Almost all the buildings in our school, uh, a, few, a few are from IGR, but almost all, so many of them are from TED Fund. And beyond the fiscal infrastructure, TED Fund also provides uh, funds for equipping the laboratories, for workshops, equipping workshops, capacity building for staff. A lot of our staff are undergoing one training or the other. Some are studying for PhD abroad, some are in Nigeria, some are studying for masters, some are going. Some have gone for uh, postdoctoral uh, fellowships, and uh, there are so many things that Ted Fund is doing to build capacity 
in our staff, and we are very grateful for that. Nigeria can be a champion on the world stage of knowledge economy. Everything we need is right here within and around us. Our academics can provide the fierce desire to overcome challenges. Our industries, with the issues they currently face, can constantly set new goals and challenges. And the government, through TED Fund and in partnership with the private sector, can provide a persistence of investments to ignite hyperdevelopment. All that is left is for us to bow our heads and do the work. And we can only do that by being intrinsically motivated. What we need is beyond a political will. What we need is an iron will. And that is the paradigm shift. Join us again on the next edition of the program. Until then, thank you for stopping by. Good night. <laughs>